In the 4-Hour Workweek, find out how you can work a lot less and enjoy life more. Author Timothy Ferris explains how to escape the 9-to-5 grind and work just 4 hours a week. Life doesn't have to be so hard. It really doesn't. Now, if you had told me that three years ago, I wouldn't have believed you. But most people, my past self included, have resigned themselves to 9 to 5 grind in exchange for sometimes, although increasingly less and less, relaxing weekends and the occasional one week, certainly no more than two week vacation. I came to realize that income really has no practical value without time. Here are a few simple steps you can take to escape the rat race entirely, not just win it. One of the first steps is the process of elimination. So to start, you need to consider something called Pareto's Law, more commonly known as the 80-20 principle. Because in order to work less and not have everything fall apart, you'll have to quantify the 20% of activities that are producing 80% of your desired outcomes. Also, take that time to determine the 20% of activities and people who are consuming 80% of your time. Use this principle for everything customers, work tasks, but also for personal chores, even for friends. The goal here is twofold. Number one, to find your inefficiencies in order to eliminate them. And then secondly, and this is just as important, to find your strengths and those critical few tasks so you can multiply your output. Working every hour, every minute, from nine to five with some type of fidget isn't the goal. It's simply the structure most people use. It's actually a legacy from a time that has already been obsolesced. In a knowledge economy, the more important thing is to shift from presence to performance, cut out the static, all the things that consume time and income without contributing back, and focus on the critical few. You'll find that very few things matter. Another critical step, and a real complement to elimination, is what I call the low information diet, or cultivating selective ignorance. Keeping abreast of all the new developments in any field will consume all of your time. It'll be all input and no output. You can't possibly digest all that information. So a more effective approach is to try to catch up when need be as opposed to keeping up at all times. A big part of selective ignorance is learning to let things wait. For example, email. So email is the single largest acceptable interruption in modern life. And it's a very convenient way of simulating forward motion without accomplishing anything. It shouldn't be a workspace, it's a tool. And one of the easiest methods I've seen for controlling email, and one that's become quite popular in Silicon Valley, is setting up a simple autoresponder, much like a vacation autoresponse, that says something like the following. Dear all, in an effort to actually get work done, I'm testing a new email policy. I'm checking and responding to email only twice a day, at 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Pacific time or whatever your time zone happens to be. If you need a response before one of these two times for anything urgent, please call me on my cell phone. Thanks for understanding this move to greater effectiveness and efficiency, whatever your name is. This gives you the breathing room, finally, to single task and focus on completing the mission critical tasks, the critical few, from start to finish without interruption. The third important tool I'd like to mention, and one of my personal favorites, is outsourcing life. To get started though, we first need to replace the very obsolete concept of annual income, which is a very deceptive metric, with hourly income. And people are generally extremely hesitant to delegate or outsource because they feel they can do something free themselves. This is very inaccurate. So let's start with a very basic calculation of hourly time. If you make, let's say, $50,000 per year, you cut off the last three zeros, that leaves you 50, and you divide that in half and you get 25. So you make $25 an hour. This is assuming you get two weeks off per year and you're working 40 hours per week. So let's just say on the very high end that you can hire a personal assistant at $30 per hour to handle one workday of eight hours. So your cost per hour is then $5. So his or her 30 minus your 25. That means $40 for a full eight hour day of freedom. So this also means that you can take a three day weekend every week and it will cost you $40 per week. I hire virtual assistants around the world which only takes a few hours to help me with 
just about everything from business research to reading email, cutting hundreds of email down to four or five that I actually have to deal with, to travel, product development, purchasing, planning parties, even online dating. There are a lot of unorthodox and creative uses. Personal outsourcing is only limited by your imagination, and the return on investment is astounding. 400, 500%, even for someone who makes 30, 40 thousand dollars a year. It's smart to focus on getting things done, but it's only possible when you actually set your not to do list. So once we remove the constant static and the distraction and focus on the critical few, and there really just aren't that many. So I hope you enjoyed the book, and just remember that outside of the law and science, all the rules we follow are rules we set ourselves. So set yourself up to win and choose your own rules.